Our next song will be number 532, Day by Day. Do we do another? Um, the next one we're going to do is a new one for maybe some of you. Uh, let's talk about Jesus.
we're going back to the hymn book for the last one, number 216, when the roll is called up yonder.
There is a candle in every soul Some brightly burning and some dark and cold And there is a spirit who brings a fire Ignites a candle and makes his own Carry your candle and run to the darkness Seek out the helpless, confused and torn And hold out your candle for all to see it Take your candle Frustrated brother, see how he's tried to light his own candle some other way. See now your sister, she's been robbed and lied to, still holds a candle. hearts are blazing so let's raise our candles and light up the sky praying to our father in the name of jesus make us a
Morning. Do you think there were enough kids up here? Laurel, how many Pathfinders do we have? We have 29. 29, and how many adventurers? I think they've already gone out, but I, they looked like they were even more adventurers. I think there might have been more of them than there were of you, so watch out. <laughs> Welcome to the Kingsport Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, we're so glad to have you here today. We have a full church today. Uh, we have a few announcements. Definitely look in the bulletin for, for the announcements uh, that are in there. And there's a couple we wanted to highlight today. One is coming up tomorrow, there is a mother-son event, and Karen has a little bit more about that. I am neither a mother nor do I have sons, so I don't really know much about this event, but Karen's got it all. Good morning. Tomorrow, we are going to have the long-awaited mother-son event that was first scheduled for March of 2020 and was canceled and it's been rescheduled. Um, we're asking the mothers and the sons to meet here at the church at 1230. We will have a short devotional by Pastor Dave and then the mothers and sons who want to go bowling, we will take you over to Warpath Lanes. We will rent shoes for you. We will pay for a couple of games and you can bowl for those of um, you that are have younger sons that aren't really into the bowling yet you can go down to the king uh, kingsport carousel we will pay for a couple of rides on that i believe the plan is to have a bouncy house here at the church for the younger kids to play on as well once you're done at the carousel or bowling you can come back to the church and we will have pizza and ice cream for you at that point um, if you're planning to go bowling and you have not yet talked to me, we do have a couple of extra spots available. I rented an extra lane or two just to make sure that anybody that wanted to go could, but you kind of need to let me know, like preferably by the end of today or very early tomorrow morning so that if I need to make further arrangements there, I can do that. So again, um, here at the church at 1230, if you have any questions about it, you can call me or you can call Stacy Ryder. If you want to go bowling, please let me know before the end of the day if you haven't already talked to me. Thank you. Awesome. That's almost enough to make me wish I had sons. Um, so, or that I was a mother right now. Uh, also coming up, we've got um, the Reformation uh, celebration on Sunday, October 31st, uh, alternatively known as Halloween, but we've got something better, which is the Reformation celebration. <laughs> so uh, we're going to be all offering an alternative activity for Halloween on uh, October 31st from 3 to 5 p.m. here at the church, and we're going to be doing a Reformation celebration. So you're welcome to dress up in Reformation costumes. We're going to have lots of activities here in the church. Uh, we're going to have different booths set up in our rooms that you can rotate through. We're going to have our Pathfinders leading out as they're going to be dressing up in character and highlighting some of the reformers of, of the ages. So we invite you out. Uh, there will be food, like I said, lots of activities, but we also need help. So anyone that would like to help, uh, we could use you in lots of different ways. Please see Pastor Matt or myself, and uh, lots of fun for everybody that day. One other quick thing we're doing next Sunday, we're having the advocacy seminar, and it's at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We'll also be Zooming that activity. We'll get that out to you uh, later this week. But it is for anyone that li would like to know more about advocating for children. It'll also, also be very informational as far as abuse situations. What is re abuse? How do I report that? And so if you'd like to attend that, just be here at the church next Sunday at 2 o'clock. So lots of activities here in October. Uh, and you all are welcome uh, to come to any of those. Amen. Awesome. Thank you. And there's a video. Is that Martin Luther's album? 
Want to know what's scary? Standing up for what you believe in. Have you been there? With the religious persecution that's facing our world, it might not be far away, but fear not. Martin Luther wasn't afraid. It was October 31st, 1517 that he nailed his 95 Theses to the Wittenberg church doors. This courageous act began the Protestant Reformation. People questioned what they had been taught and began reading the Word of God for themselves. God is telling us today, fear not. On Sunday, October 31st, the Kingsport Seventh-day Adventist Church invites you to a Reformation celebration. Come explore the countries and reformers who helped provide the religious freedom we enjoy today. Dress up as a reformer, a knight, a princess. Food and fun for all ages. Let's build courage for the days ahead, knowing that we are saved by faith alone, in Christ alone. Martin Luther nailed it. You can too. That's October 31st at 3 o'clock p.m. Visit kingsportsda.com for more info. Plan to come out for that. Also, this is the part where Pastor and Stacy close their ears because there's a table for Pastor Appreciation out in the hall. So be sure to drop by there sometime today. And uh, unless there's anything else, uh, like I said, be sure to check out the bulletin. There's a hike today. There's all sorts of other great things going on. So be sure to check that out. And next up, we've got the opening hymn, which is My Hope is Built on Nothing Less, number 522. If I could have my singers back up here, and we're going to sing, uh, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. Please stand. call to worship this morning is 2 Corinthians 9, 8. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Amen. 
it is time for our morning offering. And uh, today's offering is for Christian education. The verse I will read is from 2 Corinthians 9, 7. It says, so let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Will the deacons please come forward? Will you please bow your heads with me? Dear Lord, thank you for this beautiful thing, thank, day. Thank you for our families, we praise you. Among us that we have, there are so many hurting and needy people. Please lift them up and please pray for our the money that's going into this. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> In a moment here, uh, Madeline will give us our morning prayer of praise and petition. But before that, I wanted to share the praises and prayers from Sabbath School. Um, we have many praises this week. We have praises that Carol Crowder is doing better, for Karen doing better, for apples, for canning. We're going to be doing that later this week. Uh, Steve has a new job. Uh, that Phyllis is happy. Can we, can we give praise for happiness? Amen. Absolutely. Praise for Pastor Dave and Stacy. We're so blessed to have them at our church. We have praise that things are getting closer to Jesus coming. Amen. Amen. Praise for the rain, for flowers, and for peace in the storm. We also have prayer requests for Eric Hoover, whose arm is injured. Uh, for Monty, for Sandra, who is in hospice, and Richard, for Les, whose wife died, for the kids at Fletcher, that they would stay healthy, for Misty and John in Alaska, for uh, those affected by the oil spill on, in California and the beaches there, uh, for Ron and Minnelli and their work of evangelism, for the building project, for the Wells family, for Amika's family, who's having a rough time, for our country and its leaders, for pastor appreciation, for LSCA and its students, many of whom you just saw up front here, uh, for Judy and Gina, who have the coronavirus, for Ed Sanders, who had a stroke and is uh, not doing well, and for Steve's car. Uh, do we have other requests or praises at this time? Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, wow. So for the, the, the family of a friend named Michael who was going to be getting married next weekend, this, or this weekend, next weekend, but his father had, uh, came down with the coronavirus and passed away. So prayers for that family. Yes. Other requests or praises? All right, well then let's, let's kneel together as we sing our prayer song. Dear Jesus, thank you that we are all here as a church family, and please be with all the prayer requests, and thank you for the praises, and we all love you. Amen. Amen. Um, it's now time for the children's story. Victoria will be having our children's story today. And will all the little children please come forward and um, get the buckets and collect the money. Thank you.
Okay, so I have a question. How many of you have ever gone camping? I did. You did? That's awesome. Oh. So, on every Pathfinder camp out that I've ever been on, there's one rule that they always say. And that rule is, there is no food in the tents. So my story today is called Ricky's Midnight Snack. And the two, thing, Rick, two things Ricky liked most in the whole world were eating and pathfindering. So early one summer when Pastor Norris asked the Pathfinder Club if they would like to take a backpacking trip, Ricky was the first on his feet. The club agreed to meet on Sunday at Pastor Norris's house with all of their equipment. Ricky spent the week rummaging in the garage, attic, and basement. The pile of camping equipment in his room grew larger and larger. He had a sleeping bag, backpack, a pup tent, a gasoline stove, a lantern, a couple of books on camping, a hatchet, a folding saw, and a shovel. On the one Sunday morning, Pastor Norris surveyed the mountains of camping equipment in his den, and his eyes twinkled. The first thing we should do, he said, is take a preliminary hike to pick up everything you've got with you, and let's go for a walk. He picked up his own backpack and waited. The Pathfinder stared at him in dismay. Then they complained, we can't carry all this stuff. Pastor Norris agreed with them. Go through your things and take out whatever you can do without. Then put on your packs because we're still going for that walk. After several short walks, the Pathfinder's packs were satisfactorily lightened. Then they discussed food. Everyone will prepare their own meals, he told them. Bring dried food and cooking fuel. Leave the cans at home because they're too heavy. Finally, the Monday morning of the trip arrived. The campers were at the pastor's house bright and early. Their packs and sleeping bags had already been tied to cook securely under a tarp on top of the station wagon. So they eagerly piled in and got on their way. It was a long drive, but they sang, told stories, and played games, and the time passed quickly. Finally, late in the day, they arrived at their first camping spot. They were going to hike and camp Tuesday and Wednesday, and Mrs. Norris would pick them up Thursday morning. Tuesday morning, the Pathfinders rolled up their sleeping bags, had morning worship, ate breakfast quickly, and were on their way. It was a glorious day, and the Pathfinders enjoyed the hike. All too soon, evening came. They set up camp in a grassy meadow. As Ricky was unrolling his sleeping bag, Pastor Norris walked by and saw Ricky's bag of uh, apples, a box of raisins, some cookies and crackers, and two packages of cupcakes. There are bears up here. We'll have to put every bit of food in our backpacks and hang them high in a tree, Pastor Noy said. Everyone got busy preparing dinner. Then they loaded their food into their backpacks, strung them on a long rope, and pulled them up into a tall pine in the middle of the meadow. Pastor Norris had evening worship, and the tired campers settled down to sleep. At the edge of the meadow, where the woods were dark and deep, a huge black bear ambled along a narrow trail. He stopped and sniffed the air. The bear had spent most of his life in the Yosemite National Park around the campgrounds on the valley floor. He had dined off the leftovers and handouts of tourists, but this summer he had gotten too aggressive and had been banished to the high country. Now he smelled the familiar scent of food. He edged closer and sniffed again. Sure enough, people and food. He stepped out into the clearing and surveyed the campsite. There was an occasional sound, the kind people make when they're sleeping, but no one moved. The bear came closer. Ricky opened his eyes and looked up at the full moon shining through the pine trees. He could see the backpacks high in the tree, and instantly he felt hungry. Quietly, he reached down into the folds of his sleeping bag for a plastic sack he had hidden there. He found a marshmallow and was just about to pop it into his mouth when he saw a big black shape moving over him. Ricky let out a war whoop. At the same time, the bear's paw hit the sleeping bag, racking it from top to bottom and sending Bag and Ricky flying. The zipper popped open and Ricky rolled out onto the ground. The uproar awakened the others and they came pouring out of their beds. Pastor Norris herded them to the far side of the clearing. 
but the bear ignored them. He was too busy trying to get at Ricky's goodie bag. Find me some rocks, some rocks, Pastor Noyce whispered. Do it quickly. The Pathfinders fell around on the ground and handed some small rocks to Pastor Noyce, who threw them towards the bear. Finally, the intruder ate the last marshmallow and ambled off into the forest. Ricky's sleeping bag was in shreds. It took a while for the campers to go back to sleep, but slowly, one by one, they drifted off, all except Ricky. Poor Ricky spent the rest of the night wrapped in a borrowed blanket on the hard ground. It was a long time before the other Pathfinders let Ricky forget about the bear's visit, but Ricky did learn one important lesson. It's important to follow instructions. Our parents and teachers care about us and give us advice to help us. And God loves us and gives us the Bible to follow too. You may go back to your seats. Um, the scripture reading for today is found in Romans 8, 31 through 37. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not know, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a, cha a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for, you say, for your sake we are all killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in, all yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Good morning. How are you? I feel a little confined. I don't know. <laughs> so, but anyhow, I, in your bulletins, I gave you a sheet. I want you to see what I'm doing. Uh, there's some things on here that I, I don't know. You might want, you might not want. But I want to start out today with, you know, that there, maybe you know this. There are over 2,000 known fears to mankind. Can you think of some of them? Let me, let me give you a few of them. You'll, you'll start to see what I'm talking about. A blutophobia. 
It's the fear of dark. So some of us may not, maybe you kids, you got nightlights by your beds, got a little nightlight, because you're afraid of the dark, right? Okay. Here's an interesting one. I think I'm saying it right. A chiraterophobia. The fear of peanut butter sticking to the roof of your mouth. It's kind of funny, isn't it? <laughs> Bibliophobia, afraid of books. I, I hope most students aren't. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Cunningham and Megan would have a hard time if people are afraid of books. Uh, uh, I don't know how to say this, this one, but uh, uh, it's the fra- a fear of washing, bathing, or cleaning. I hope people overcome that one because uh, it could be bad for the rest of us, right? Here's one, Pastor, for you. Ecclesiophobia. Afraid of churches or pastors. <laughs> that, that could be bad, right? <laughs> but, but you guys, we, we laugh at some of these fears, but they're real to some people. They, they really exist. And, you know, as I walk around the hospital and I talk to different people, you know, two common fears I hear right now is the fear of COVID and the fear of the end times. And, you know, guys, um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to say a whole lot of, about either. I mean, we all have our views on, on COVID. I, I think it's rear, real. I mean, I've almost lost my mom to it. I've had it. It's not fun. But um, at the same time, I, I respect people's fear of it. And I, I also know that people are afraid and they're searching. I had one person tell me, we are living revelation. Amen. You know, I, I mean, th- they're afraid. But I, I want to ask you a sincere question. And it's not necessarily, it's a, it's a thought-provoking question. Who, who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Because you and I may see ourselves one way, but that is not necessarily how God may see you. And how God sees us is very important. With Christ, you are an overcomer. With Christ, you can overcome every single fear known to mankind. Fear is not from God. I mean, it is, it's not from God. It's from the devil. Christ is from God. He gives you the power to overcome fear. And so as we look today, I want us to think about, I want you to change your perception. If you think that you're, you're afraid of something or you don't think you can do something, I'm hopeful by the end of this sermon, you will see things from God's perspective and not your own. With that said, let's pray. Lord, you are an awesome God. And Lord, we, uh, we thank you for what you've done for us. Thank you for Jesus Christ, who's overcome the world. And Lord, I ask and pray that your spirit be in this place right now. That you would allow us to see Jesus and experience your spirit. Lord, help us to be like Jesus. We ask it in his name. Amen. So with Christ, you're an overcomer. Okay. So we, I know it's been a couple months, but we, I've been talking to you this, this year about discipleship and I want to start, and I had uh, Ashton read the whole passage because I want you to, and let me explain what's going on. I want us to pick up and start in verse 37, okay? But I wanted the context, and on your paper, it'll show that it says Romans 8, 31, 32, 35, 37, and there's a reason for that. Because in all these things, we are more, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I put Christ in brackets, and if you go back and look at those verses, you can see the trend where it's actually Christ. Okay, that's why they're all there. You can go back and read it. You can go back and highlight it, but 
you can see where I'm coming from in that bracket where him is Christ. Okay? So with, with Christ, you and I are more than conquerors. Pernical. To vanquish beyond recognition, to, to gain a decisive victory. That's what it means to be more than a conqueror, an overcomer. Now I want you, you can look in your own Bibles, you can look on the sheet, whatever you want to do. But John 16, 33. In this world you will, what? Have faced trouble. But take heart because I have overcome the world. Overcome. Now, interesting, in the Acts of the Apostles, just after Ellen White quotes this verse that we just said, John 16, 33, she has this quote. That's why I gave you the papers, because I wanted you to see it. But, some, Bill, you want to read it out loud for us so I don't mess it up? Or somebody, you can if you want. You got a paper? Okay. Oh, you got it. Christ did not fail, neither was he discouraged. The disciples were to show a faith of the same enduring nature. They were to work as he had worked, depending on him for strength. Though their way would be obstructed by apparent impossibilities, yet by his grace they were to go forward, despairing of nothing and hoping for everything. That's what she says right after. Thank you, Bill. Right after quoting John 16, 33. That's amazing. You and I are those disciples. You and I are to go forward in confidence, hoping for everything, relying on Christ's strength. Now, as an overcomer, there are some things that we can do. And I, and I think this is where I'm hoping that you'll start to change your perspective if you see it. The first thing I want you to think about is fight with a conquering attitude. How many times in life do you see people say, I'm a Christian, and they're walking around with their head down, all depressed, boom, and they're running into things. Hey, that's my job. I'm, you know, I'm blind. You're not blind. Keep your head up. Don't run into things. You know, that's what we have to do. Fight with a conquering attitude. Are you listening? Conquering. Overcomer. That's what Jesus did. He overcame the world. And he's wanting us as disciples to fight in that same way. All right. 2 Corinthians 10.5. We're going to look in a little bit. So, on your paper, it's under the first, second bullet point. Fight with conquering attitudes. Uh, do we have a volunteer who wants to read it? I guess we can pass it around, or I can recite them. But I, I don't, I don't feel like being a. Anybody want to help? Or we can read it together too. We got a volunteer, or no? Oh, Bill, you want to read it again? He's nominating you. Yeah, that's way good. I mean, I can say it, but. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Amen. So you guys, how many times do you go through life and you're on your phone or your computer or the TV and you're, you catch yourself doing or seeing and being on things that aren't really godly. You know, I'm, I'm coming to the place in my life where I don't really do Facebook. I don't really spend a lot of time on, like, the Internet as much as I used to. I just don't find it a lot of worth my time, personally. And it's hard to change. It's hard to let go of things that we use so commonly. But I like what the psalmist writes here in 1829. You know, with, with your help, I can advance against the troop. Crush an army in some of your versions. But in your spirit, I can scale a wall. With my God, I can scale a wall. Meaning, you can overcome anything. Your attitude is, is really the biggest challenge. My attitude. My attitude. 
is the biggest challenge. It's not what God can or cannot do. It's what we allow God to do. You know, a few years ago I was in Cuba and I was um, working with this church, building a church, doing a series there. And uh, I remember the first night we got there and Lila and I and pulled up and, and the team that was at this church and the Cuban uh, union president was there, the conference president, the director of um, Spirit of Prophecy and church planning was there and, and the elders, the pastors, they were all embarrassed and they're struggling and the translator came and I said, what is going on? And he goes, they're embarrassed because the equipment is no good. It's bad. And I said, no, 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 no. I said, was it working yesterday? Yeah, working 10 minutes ago. I said, it's not the equipment. He goes, yeah, it is. We, we don't have good technology. I said, nah. In America, we do evangelism. The devil messes with our technology, too. I said, it's the devil. I said, Alex, go get all them people. Go get all of them over here. And I said, we're going to pray about this right now. So they all come over, and we gather, and I say, Lord, we are here to do your will. We are here to give you, your people, the gospel. We are here to help. And we ask that you would uh, fix this technology. Boom! The lights come on. The power comes on. Everything. And thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. Amen. They were just like, whoa. I said, it's not the technology, guys. God is bigger than the technology. I said, just to prove this, go put two people by that technology box right there and keep them there all night. And we'll show. God will put an angel there. And this won't happen again. It's our attitude. We have to fight with a conquering attitude. If we want to be an overcomer, we have to act and behave like Jesus did. Next, fight with spiritual weapons. For we live in this world, right? But we don't fight the way the world fights. In 2 Corinthians, we fight with spiritual weapons. They are what? What are some of our spiritual weapons, guys? Prayer. Prayer. Have, Pastor, has anybody been accused of praying too much? I don't, so. I don't think so either. What are some of the others? What? Singing, yes. We can sing, fellowship, and praise God in song. Our scriptures. We can use these, right? And they demolish things. They demolish the things that hold us back, the strongholds. You know, I love this verse in 2 Corinthians 4, 7 to 10. But we have this, what, treasure in jars of clay that the surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not, what, crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Discouraged, guys, but what? We keep going. Why? Because we cannot be destroyed. With God's help, we are there. I will tell you another story in, that, in a Cuba trip. Later in the series, I, and I, I'll tell you what I was doing. In Jesus' sayings on the cross, all our Seventh-day Adventist doctrines flow right out of his sayings. And so I was doing a series of evangelism based on Jesus' sayings on the cross. Okay? And Friday night comes, and I was going to do, it is finished. Jesus is saying. And a storm had come through that part of the island the night before. And this time it was, the transmitter for the whole community was wiped out. So there really was no power. It wasn't just the devil this time. I mean, yes, the devil, yes, because he sent, you know, caused damage. But it, it was a different type of problem than the technology the devil's tinkering with. So Lila and I get there, and it's, they're, it's, they're sitting in the dark. It's just, and they're all discouraged, thinking I wouldn't preach in the dark. And uh, so Alex comes up, and I said, Alex, what is going on? Why are they so discouraged? Pastor Matt, 
they don't think you will preach in the dark. I said, Alex, I live in the dark. If they can sit in the dark, I can preach in the dark. He says, okay, I'll tell them. And he goes, and oh, they were so happy, you know. So my wife had it the hardest. She had to do VBS in the dark, you know. I'm, I'm at least used to it. I said, you guys just have to take Alex's little phone as our source of Bible. But as soon as I asked them to open their Bible, all their phones came out with their downloads, and they were happy. Why? Because we fight with what? Spiritual weapons, the Bible, prayer, singing, fellowship. Guys, these are what we do as Christians. Sometimes I feel like we don't wear out our scriptures. You know, I got a good laugh. We have a Bible in one of these pews, Pastor, that we have to replace. It's missing some pages. It's been worn out. One of the pathfinders in the Bible sword drill on Wednesday couldn't answer because there's no page there. So, uh, happened twice. So, I mean, I like it when we have to replace scriptures because we're using them. They're meant to wear out. We have to wear them out. That's what God wants us to do. That's why he's preserved his word. Now, here's the catch. So we fight with a conquering attitude. We fight with spiritual weapons, but we fight with an eternal perspective in mind. My dad's favorite passage in all of the Bible is Colossians 3, 1 to 4. And specifically, verse 2. Set your minds on things above and not on this earth. Let me tell you this. If you and I want to be in heaven, how much more should we live like that now? I mean, we are, we are what we do. We are what we say. We are the things that we reflect, right? You're not going to change that. I mean, it, what's in our heart flows out. So why not prepare and put our heads and our minds in heaven and live like that? You know, I cannot honestly say that's always been my desire. But of lately, that is. It doesn't take a rocket science to look around the world and see that things are not right. There's famine. There's pestilence. There's diseases. There's hardship. There's corruption. Right? It's not going to be that way in heaven. And we can choose to live like that. You know, I put it, there's another quote from our higher calling here. I want you to think about it. Conformity to Christ's behavior. Overcoming all sin and temptation. Walking in the fear of God and setting the Lord continually before us will bring us pure joy and peace on earth and pure happiness in heaven. Whoa. Reflect on that a minute. Do we do that? Is the Lord constantly before us? Is it? I can't answer for you. And obviously you can't answer for me. God knows our heart. But eternity is only a little ways away. I think it's closer than we want to admit. And now is the time to fight with the eternal perspective. It's not time to straddle the fence and try to have one foot in the world and one foot in heaven. That's not desirable to God. What's desirable is that you, with Christ, overcome the world. You and I alone, we can't do it. But with Christ, we can. And I will leave you one of my favorite verses in the Bible, and that's 1 John 4, 4. You, dear friends, are from God and have overcome the world because the one who is in you is greater than the one 
who is in the world. You, you and I, guys, we're passing through. This is not our home. This is not where we want to be. We want to be with Christ. Let's start living as if we're the citizens of heaven. Let's start being ready to see Jesus come. Let's just start being like Jesus would. Somebody at the hospital retired yesterday. I went to say goodbye to her. I really like her. She's a very God-fearing woman. And she thanked me. She said, Matt, I really appreciate that you have never hesitated to go into a COVID room. Those patients are so alone, and they need you. I said, well, I appreciate it, but what they really need is Jesus. I said, but I, I believe God would have gone. I believe Christ would have gone, so I will go. Guys, we have every opportunity to share our faith now. That is coming to a close. I don't want... There's two things I fear in life that I have every ability to control. One, I do not want to get to heaven without my children. I have every ability to influence my children. And I seek... God's counsel. I pray for my children every day. I pray that I would be the God, the father that God wants me to be and the husband that God wants me to be. And two, I do not want to stand before the Lord to remember, find out there was people I missed opportunities to share with. Because we are here for Jesus. He died for us. He's called us to testify and witness and share our faith. You know people, and I know people. And I don't want to think back in life, I missed an opportunity. Set your minds on things above and not on this earth. Because that's how we overcome. Our closing hymn is number 526. Because he lives.
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the amazing power that you can give us in our lives. And we just pray that we would grasp that, that we would connect with you, that we would be getting ready to spend eternity with you, and that we would be bringing others closer to that eternity as well. Be with us through this coming week, and may we receive and recognize opportunities to share with others. In your name, amen.